Um, we're here with Life Restoration Radio slash podcast, our weekly thing where we all hang out. Jason's off camera right now, but this is Eric and I'm Robin. And we invite you to interact with us tonight as we do a live video on Facebook rather than our normally live audio podcast. Boom. Getting a little bit of the mic the action mic set up. We are official and professional. Did yes. you catch what I did there? Profic professional and proficient people. And that's my honey's backside. Mm. <laughs> I was saying that for your sight sounds thing. Oh, you didn't get yeah, it. yeah, I got. No, I heard you. Okay. That's why I threw it in the for people. <laughs> it only kind of works like that. <laughs> All right, so. We started the show on the ass end of things. <laughs> if you haven't tuned into one of our podcasts before, well, let me just tell you, you're missing out. But um, this is how we do things here once a week. Um, so you can check it out on our Facebook page, Life Restoration. It's facebook.com forward slash restoration radio. Um, but we talk all things life improvement, life restoration. We lay our lives down so you can see what we're going through. Um, sometimes in real time and sometimes that's hard for me being vulnerable in the moment but I am a work in progress and again if you missed the introductions this is Jason. Do you have an echo? <laughs> yeah I hear an echo. Um, Eric and I'm Robin. So welcome to our weekly podcast. What are we going to talk about tonight guys? We, we kind of do this thing good where we don't really plan it or something happens right before. Yeah. And we're kind of like we're we got a lot because we didn't we didn't do a show last week, and um, <laughs> <clears throat> so we've got two a couple of weeks worth of stuff probably to talk about. And it's, I think yeah. it's been fairly uh, fairly eventful. It our lives have been extremely They've eventful. Been very eventful. Eventful. Yes, the last Not two eventful. weeks. Eventful. All right, so As in full Jason is sharing the podcast. I think Eric's doing the same on their own pages. So I'm yep. just letting them do that while all of you guys just join in and get ready for the best time of your entire day. Actually, let's go ahead and say your week, your life, best, if you will. <coughs> whatever. Whatever it The is. best moment you're experiencing right now. <laughs> of all the moments moment. you're experiencing right now, this one's yeah. going to be the best. Right, um, in this moment. In this moment. Now. It'll be the best one you've right ever now. had in this moment. Yes, in the present. Now this moment will be the best moment <laughs> you're experiencing in the moment. So, okay. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, so what Eric was saying is we missed the podcast last week. We did not do it. We had some, let's just call them technical difficulties. Mm. More like Robin was having vulnerability issues of... Not necessarily wanting to put all my stuff out there for everyone to see. Hey, we had a good talk, though. It was a good... Uh... Even Eric learned something about himself. I did. I, I did. <laughs> I learned that, that I was still codependent in a lot of ways. And uh, trying yeah. to make Robin feel better. Thank I got you. sucked into the <clears throat> into the conversation and then yeah. got, got uh, brought back into position yeah. by Senior Vossler. Yeah, he has a way of doing that. Yeah. So if you haven't joined our podcast before, um, we really just kind of talk about the topics of the week. We encourage engagement questions. Let us know what's going on in your life. Um, we have been really great friends for a long time. I'm married to this guy over here. If you don't follow him on Twitter with the other 10,000 people around the world, at Jason Vossler. But... Um, these are some somebodies here, and we just have fun on this podcast every week. We have fun, right? So I do. I'm always having fun. I'm always enjoying but, it. Yeah, it's a highlight of I've talked our to, days. I've talked to at least three people <laughs> that said they enjoyed it too. Yeah. So we well, got that going for us. Them, huh? Yeah, all three of them. And I didn't even have to. I didn't like even poll them. They just told me. Like they sent me something and said. Hey, that was really good. Are they stopped me in the hallway or somewhere? So, oh yeah, goodness, sorry. I'm and they were like, that this. was that was really good. I like that one this week. I'm gonna follow along with the commentary. Sorry for the echo. And I was like, that was that was three. Last time it was three people. Yeah. I didn't talk to everybody that watched. There was some other people. I I think I'm choosing to believe that everyone enjoyed it. That they all were so blown away they didn't even know how to express right how much they enjoyed it. And so, I um. I just, I could feel it Yes. online. Okay, I'm just going to cut you off right there. Uh -huh. Let's keep talking. <laughs> I'm going to talk a little bit about 
what we have done up to this point with our podcast. Now we're into it for quite some time. And, um, you know, really, we believe deeply in evolving daily and just constantly growing, learning new things, educating ourselves, researching things, holding each other accountable, and living in what we call an authentic community, Mm -hmm. which is way more difficult than it sounds. And it is the belief that instead of being anything other than our truest self, we are continuing to basically peel back the layers of who we are um, or who we've grown to be based on these experiences that we've had in life that have molded and made us into, you know, people other than ourselves, wearing masks, pretending to be things that we're not. And it is really difficult to always be 100% authentic in life. So you guys get good practice at it with the meetings that you hold at the Adonai House with men who are going through the same things. You guys are able to hold each other accountable. Jason and I have great discussions about it, but I certainly have um, what I would say is some uh, stairs to climb when it comes. But the good news is it's about celebrating where you're at in this moment and not wanting to be anywhere else other than exactly where you are in this present time. Yep. All right, Jason. That was a good intro. We're ready for it. That was a huge up. intro. That was, well, we're ready for you to join us. Like, bring some life to our party and let's... Hey, uh, I'm, I'm usually not the life to the party, remember? Uh, what? I'm not the guy that brings the life to the party. He's... Y- yeah. He's Hollywood. Guy, he's Hollywood. There's there's the life and there's restoration. He brings the restoration. <laughs> yeah. <so>. Yeah. <laughs> that is good. That is true. He brings that part. That's his contributing piece. All right. So... We toyed around with a couple of different conversations. Yeah, we've had a lot of talk. Um, I mean, we've kicked around a lot of topics. Starting and... so. What are those topics? Well, what are we talking about? I mean, you just did this whole build up of what we what, what our podcast the, is about into the differences our... of of you know either being authentic or not right. being authentic, and so what does that look like to you and and Okay, I got a good I got a good story for that. Um, I was when I was meeting with some women at our women's house that we had open. Um, I said out loud, I was like, you know what? I realized this in this past week that I'm not 100% authentic 100% of the time, and people were taken aback from that. Like, oh, what? Yeah, yeah, whatever, Robin. And I'm like, no, let me explain. And it's just more of this awareness thing, like you were mentioning earlier. Um, I don't know your quote, but you said something about you can't exactly be grateful, but you can, you know, you can be aware. No, you can't. Yeah. Gratitude is not something that we have the ability to be. Right. We simply have the ability to be aware. And that awareness creates, is what creates. Cre- appreciation and that. So, gratitude. so what authenticity looks like 100% of the time is your closest people to you calling you out on your stuff even when you don't want to be called out or you're not in a position to receive what they're saying as was the case last week okay yeah so is there such thing as being 99 percent authentic 99 percent of the time or 99 percent of authentic i'd say no okay so no. then, why do we say 100% authentic? 100% of the time. Mm. I said both. I said 100% authentic, 100% of the time. Hmm. That's a good question. I think because in the situation where I was responding to someone, and and I was, you know, feeling them, in my mind I was going, what the heck did she just say? Like, I totally disagree with what she said, but I more became codependent in the moment and, like, coddling the situation so you know something i wanted to explain to people that listen like i don't want that to continue (laughs) when we say the word codependent there's like a reference to me no 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 (laughs) it wasn't that you you did the you did the i was codependent in the moment like i was like like johnny over here i'm like no 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 okay 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 it was you're right that's right see that's authentic that's authentic. Yeah. So, so you know what? One of the things that 
you know, a lot of people struggle with perfectionism out there or what is labeled as perfectionism, right? Yes. And so one of the things that perfectionists love to do is compartmentalize things. You know why they? I was a professional at that. Okay. Okay. Explain compartmentalization for those people that might not understand. Well, it it would be much like saying the difference between a hundred percent authentic and ninety nine percent authentic, and then you said you immediately reverted to compartmentalizing. Oh, wait a minute. Are you talking about time? Yeah. Are you talking about Mm -hmm. this over here? Right. And then. If I would have gone any deeper, you would immediately compartmentalize the next <laughs> label. Yep. So that you can always stay in this p- position of perfectionism. Right. So uh, w- what I like to do, which is why I... Are the professional. May not always be the life of the party, whatever mm-hmm. that means. The excitement, the f- f- quote-unquote fun, entertaining. I'm not a very entertaining guy. I um, think so. Uh, I disagree. Yeah. So. <laughs> Depends on whose chair you're it's, sitting. There's all types of entertainment out there. Yes, this know? is true. This is true. So, what I like to do is just simply point out the very undeniable that sits right in front of us versus going so deep mm-hmm. into meanings and labels that it allows people to uh, distract you yeah. from the truth. And so... I just use the very simplistic, well, you started the topic, 100% authentic. I said, what about 99%? Right. And then we go down to the next level. So let's look at the undeniable of the next level. Perfectionism, compartmentalizing. See, what is, what is not. And so what we like to do is stay in control. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if you're perfectionism, if you're a perfectionist or not. Right. We have been programmed to be in this delusion, this illusion of control. And the reality is is that we're not in control. Right. And the more we try to control or hold on to it, the more obvious it becomes that we are not in In control. control. Mm -hmm. And it just takes somebody, it doesn't have to be me, but I do... But it usually is, you I, I, I do it, is I'm just on a different speed than everybody else. <laughs> and that could be We're a lower speed or a higher speed, depending right. on the right. situation. And for those watching, he's not actually on speed. He's No. <laughs> Drug free. Yes. 12 years and counting. Yes, yeah, so almost food free today. But yeah. <clears throat> That's another podcast. Yeah. yeah, a whole different That's podcast. That's a podcast. So, it's just the ability to see things for what they are and slow things down or speed things up so that we can accept it and be with the frequency of what is. And most people don't like to be with the frequency of what is. Would you say that when you're talking about what is and then talking about how people are conditioned to get caught up in all the compartmentalizing of all these different aspects of what is. Right. It is, uh, what another way to, to define that would be like, um, you have the what, right? And then you have like all these whys and explanations of why what is, mm-hmm. is, right? And what I catch myself doing and what I see other people doing is they get so wrapped up in trying to explain or come up with a story as to why what is, is, yeah. right? that they stay away from actually what's so obvious on the surface. It's like you're, what you point out is this gets totally overlooked. Yeah. And all this energy is spent chasing your tail on a story that could or could not be true and more likely is completely unimportant to the fact that you're dealing with this and right. or not dealing with this. Right. Is that another way to say it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Or it may not be that. It may be a distraction to for other people not to see right. what you already know is the truth deflecting or... and so what you're doing is you're distracting and you're acting out they would call it if mm-hmm. you were to use it in child rearing terms um, 
so that you, you're not dealing with the obvious. And what's really ironic is adults act out more than children right. do it all yeah. because children don't have any clue what they're doing. Now, they we program them. If you scream loud enough, if you cry loud enough, then you'll get what you want type of thing. Mm-hmm. And so they learn that and they begin to do it. And you'll hear that phrase a lot with... Uh, with parenting, but you will not hear it a lot in counseling. Yeah. And I really feel that that's mostly what that is. And so one of the most important things that we can talk about tonight is authentic communication. It's always the most important thing that we can talk about. It begins and ends with you, this authentic communication. And if you cannot communicate authentically to yourself, you cannot communicate authentically right. to your others. Mm-hmm. Which brings me all the way back to where this conversation started, which is 100% authentic. And then I posed the question, well, can something be 99% authentic? And the reality is, is no. Right. We are either authentic or we are not. But we love to put in these mm-hmm. little compartments that allow us to make ourselves feel good yeah. mm-hmm. about ourselves or about the bullshit that we're spewing to other people so that we can continue to make it on another day. When really, if we just simply will communicate authentically to ourselves about what is, then we will be able to break break free, break from our current positions, from ourselves, so that we can move on, unfold into these infinite possibilities. That was a good way to put it. Man, that was a lot. Thanks for joining. Yes, in Uh, case you're just joining. See you next week. See you next week. Um, (laughs) Good night. I think, you know, one of the things when we first started examining the undeniable, you know, going through that exercise Mm -hmm. that, um, and working on authentic communication. Yeah, I was going to tell you to hop in the... Oh, about it. I'm sorry. Um, It was like, we're we're getting so high tech, I can't keep up. (laughs) Um, Was the conditioning that had happened over the years based off of different, I'll call it life, you know, life improvement plans or recovery programs and church programs and all stuff that had taught us how, or taught me how to evaluate what was going on. And so I would spend a lot of time not looking at the undeniable or looking at it in a way of like we were talking about trying to explain it and not be able to communicate effectively because I'm right. trying to communicate in a way that's trying to explain why something's happening and put all this energy into the source of, you know, why something happened to me or there's an enemy out to get me or I'm with this or this has happened to me today because I made a mistake and then when I make a mistake, bad things happen and, you know, good things happen yeah. when I do this and there's just all this exhausting time spent trying to get into a, trying is the first problem, Get to get into this place where you think you can then feel comfortable enough or not to look at what the undeniable is versus just looking at the undeniable fact in the situation or an incident or person or instance or word or whatever it is and say, yeah. this is what it is. But it's man's desire to have this knowledge of fill in the blank before there's any action to it. And right. so our education system's built upon it. Mm-hmm. All Western religion is built upon it. Um, medicine is built upon it, Western-wise. You look at all these things, it's the pursuit of knowledge before any effort is ever brought forth. And because of that, the individual is never allowed to act from a place of creation. It's always acting from a place of uh, reaction. Yeah. And that reaction is that old story. And so it's that, that pursuit to, well, I have to know this before I'll do anything. Right. And the well, reality is, is that... Understand it before I'll... Right. Understand it. it, know. Yeah. And there is no creation from understanding. Right. Knowledge is not power. Right. Explain <clears throat> the undeniable. Like, explain looking at any type of situation and understanding what the undeniable or undeniables are in it. So what I believe is that... Mm Self-awareness is a process. Mm -hmm. Self-awareness is a journey. We we use a statement around here a lot. I'm I'm at a new level of awareness, and oftentimes that new level of awareness will bring a a discomfort 
not that it's good, not that it's bad. It's different, mm-hmm. and something that's different brings it, it, yeah. we respond to it as to, you know something. That, it's just a discomfort. It's just different, and so you have to start somewhere. You cannot be you no longer. It, it, what's the phrase? I have it on the tip of my tongue, and I'll bring it out here in a minute, but. Oh man, I can't even, I can't figure it out. But no longer in today's day and age with how much, how many tools that we have, how much information that we have, how many resources and and people that have experienced these things and have applied it, no longer can you uh, just say that you are unaware. Right. Right? You cannot just be inept and be like, that's okay. Oh, don't worry about her. She's inept. My favorite thing is in the church, they'll say, oh, bless her. Bless her heart or bless his heart. You know, they're just unaware or inept. Well, the reality is, is that that is no longer an excuse. You cannot be unaware. Uh, Matter of fact, you have a moral responsibility to be aware of who you are. So you have to start somewhere. Now, those levels of awareness come based on your participation Mm -hmm. of how much time you're willing to spend in becoming aware of who you are. And as you do that, you know, I can sit in a room and be aware of a whole bunch of different other things than somebody that may just be starting or somebody that may not have grown up in an environment where they need to be aware, where they've always been taken care of or... Um, when people have looked out for them versus, say, in an environment where it's been survival. Yeah. Right. Uh, you're aware of different types of things. Mm-hmm. And so I'm not, re- mm-hmm. I don't know, I, I don't remember what the question was. But <laughs> I was asking about the undeniables. Okay, so. Oh, how do you identify the yeah. undeniables? Yeah. So, so it practice. starts with that practicing awareness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And as you become practicing, uh, as you practice this awareness, the undeniable things are not the, the why. The undeniable right. things are just the things that are. And so we have ways in which, Eric and I have ways in which we can ask people questions about simple things. Yeah. Like simply looking in a mirror. The mirror test is one of my favorite things and saying, what do you see? Mm-hmm. And a person will you oftentimes repeat back to you whatever it is that they don't like about themselves. And all I'm asking for is, you know, what color is the mirror, the frame around the mirror, if right. there is one. What are the reflections in the mirror? Is the mirror beveled? And th- that in itself is practicing awareness, not something that you're making up in your mind and then saying that's what you see, mm-hmm. because that is not what you see. Right. Uh, yeah, one of the examples that I like is, it, it, I always go back to, is like emails. Because for whatever reason in my world, there's tons of emails going around, mm-hmm. and it's a it's a picture of this. It's not how I actually do it, but it's just a picture of examining the undeniable. Is you get an email, and somebody says something, and the words there could be five words on the email, mm-hmm. but in your brain, you've heard tone, mm-hmm. pitch, meaning, context, a whole other story, and the and the exercise. The undeniable is it says this right that's it you have like that's the undeniable part so when you're looking at different things in your life and yourself it's the same thing i I look down i peel back and say okay what is quote real right like what is right now and what part of this is me creating whys and stories or context yeah to try to make sense of whatever is i see in front of me because our, our nature, our conditioning is, is yeah. we, we see something and we reference the past, give it a definition based off the emotional experience we have with that or don't yeah. have with that. Um, and what if it's bad data, then we misdiagnose or misdefine it. And we do that quite often. Mm-hmm. And what you, what you start finding out when you go through this exercise regularly is how much of what you think you know is bullshit. Like it's really just made up crap. It's almost like, why do we do this, mommy? And if you get to the point, it's like just because we do it that way, you know, it's like that type of end result. Mm-hmm. And you're like, well, then I have to rethink everything. 
like reevaluate all the stuff I think I know yeah. and get down to the undeniable facts of what is really. Right. And then when you start evaluating your personal self that way, then you can really start peeling off the things to Jason's point, like the mirror example is great yeah. of stuff that you think you know about yourself or that think is real about you. That is just stuff that right. you've quote story you've written, yeah. which then you can start defining as your old story and being aware. Cause once you become aware of that, then you realize like, that's not really who I am. That's an old story that I've told myself about who I am yeah. that I, at times, if I engage in, will live into. Then I am not authentic. Right. I think what's interesting is when you do start becoming self-aware on whatever level, you start realizing, in fact, how pre-programmed you really are. Mm-hmm. You start realizing all these things that you say as blanket answers to someone's question beyond the how are you doing fine, way beyond that, that then you start analyzing and becoming self-aware that that's not really how you feel. Or you start having these thoughts and whatnot that you start realizing aren't really, you know, they're based on some experience. They're not really of your truest self. So mm -hmm. for me, I think that was the biggest eye opener is when I went down this road of becoming self-aware just seeing how many things that I say or how many thoughts that I have or how many beliefs were just pre-programming. Right. You know, like Dr. Joe Dispenza says, by the time you're 35, you live on this set of, you know, 60, 70,000 thoughts a day and 90% of them are the same thoughts as the day before as the right. day before based on your experiences, your... Um, we got more cameras going more cameras on here. Uh, based on your life experiences, the things you've been through, the things you've seen, done, been involved in, whether you were a victim, whether you weren't a victim, whatever road you took. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what has, you know, essentially the set of memorized emotions and fears and, and the things you have done by the time you're 35. Right. So when, when you're looking at some of the stuff you've already become aware of and been able to peel out of and kind of yeah. step to the side of, have you been able to... How would you describe the feeling of that one space of, quote, old story and the feeling of when you realize that and step out of it into um, the other space? I think one of the craziest things has been that when you realize something is your old story, it doesn't mean that it's actually good. It was just familiar. You know, like when you, when your mind is trying to take over of your body having these, the way that it feels about certain things, and then you're really kind of stepping out of that and trying for that 5% of your brain to, you know, the uh, conscious mind to overcome this 95% of it just running on autopilot. Right. And you start realizing these things. I think that it's like unfamiliar. So like Jason was mentioning that discomfort level. Mm -hmm. So that sucks because you're... You know, think about the way that we've all been programmed. By the time you've reached our age, you should have it all figured out. Mm -hmm. You should be this. You should be that. You should know this. You should understand this. You should right. do this. Boom. And you should be set. And that's the way you should live the rest right. of your life. And as a mom, you should be this and way. You, yeah. As a dad, you should and be this And you way. should know this. And you should understand this. And you should excel at this. But in all reality, our times have changed so much. And information is more at our fingertips and studies and, and examining these things. Um, scientifically or take neuroscience and things of that mm -hmm. nature that like I don't ever want to be I want to keep striving you know every yeah. day not think that I have it all that I've reached it all that I've you know I've attained a certain level and that's it and I'm going to live by that and I think that's something different in our generation is that people are more apt to want to discover things on their own instead of just you know, like being their parent's child kind of thing, not right. speaking specifically to my parents, but just using that as a, as saying like, we want to understand things on our own. We want to figure things out on our own. We don't want to just do this Except because this, it's always it been done this way. Yeah. There's, there's a lot more of that with our generation for sure. But the old story, it, it sucks when you figure out that a way that you've been living or things that you've been doing is something that you need to step out of. It's hard. It's not easy. Change everyone's resistant to any type of change and now you're trying to change i mean we're basically unlearning all the things we've learned over the course of our entire lives and trying to then rebuild things the way that we see them 
Does that make sense? It makes sense. I, I, I think when I hear you explain that, I hear some old story in the explanation. Mm. Really? Yeah. And what I mean well, by tell that... Tell me because so, I feel well, like I'm we, unlearning a lot. Yeah. Well, it, what I mean is, is that even in the changing is hard and everything explanation... There's old story in there that says yeah. it has to be this way, right. and it's like right. we've been told like change is hard. Right. You know, dealing doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen overnight. Right. You you can't do this. It has to be this way. Right. And what happens is is all these experiences are different, and we limit them by saying say, they have to be yeah. by that. And that's some of the stuff that I've even the thought, things that I thought were like really great definitions. Like, hey, change is change is hard, but it's okay. You yeah. know, like, and then I realize like that's bullshit. Yeah. That's a that's another old story. Like, where'd that come from? Because change isn't Why do I have hard. to say change is hard? Well, really, if yeah, you I think mean, about it, the desire. The desire to change is stronger than one. You know what I mean? Like, the desire. If you want something, it, then it's not difficult. Then you use every, you know, ounce of your body to get there. You're enthusiastic about it, whether it's, you know, it's new to you. So, change, you're right. But we are taught change is hard. And also, we are taught that change doesn't happen overnight when, if you think about some of the like you have some good examples of um, whenever you think about things in your life that change things, change they happen moment. in an instant. Well, I mean, I go back now. People would tell me all through our early recovery is like, you know, no one gets clean overnight, or no one gets no one gets recovery overnight. And I used to struggle with that because I woke up at one morning and never had a desire to use drugs again. Right. You know, so I. Um, I, I, I that wasn't something I tried to do. Right. Like I didn't try that night. And wake up the next morning and be like, oh, man, I tried so hard. Now I'm aware. Yeah. It just happened. And there, there's been other instances where I look at, well, you need to go through this process. And, you know, and when you go through this process, you'll be here. And then we'll take you back through <clears throat> again. And yeah. you should be in this range. And then I come here at the Adonai house and look at what, we, what some of these guys have done. And it's it, it all of that goes out the window. Right. Because you watch a guy walk in that's three months into his... There, there's a guy that's here that's been here three months that I would take, and, and if it was a contest of like who's <laughs> progressed the most or whatever you want to call it, I would put him up against most guys that I've seen at 10 years. Yeah. And the way he can communicate with himself and with other people would... I, yeah. I can't imagine him sitting in some other situations in a in a what recovery situation. It, it would be... It, that people would probably look at him and go, why is it, what is this guy? Like, he, is he from outer space? Right. Like, he's been clean three months. He's like, he's probably high right now. <laughs> like, you know? Um, because he's not repeating the program. Right. He's right. not, he is, he's creating each day versus repeating something. You right. Know? Yeah. And so it's, um, it's interesting. I was, the reason I asked the question is, is one of the things I was thinking about, you know, correlating what you're talking about is I, I've, I've started to like really get into how I feel. You know, because right. so, so that was something that was like, you know, don't trust your feelings. <laughs> Jason and I used to yell at guys, you know, fuck your feelings, man. Don't I only hear about your feelings. Just I'm do. pretty sure <laughs> that I have spoken from the pulpit. <laughs> yeah. Um, and said not to. Yeah, you know, who, nobody that, cares about your feelings. Yeah. I mean, I said something about feelings the other night and my wife almost fell over. And she's in the room. She thought a stranger had walked in. <laughs> so, um... <laughs> But I'm like, I'm really, you know, in that space where it's like, it's first off, it's really great. It's something I'd suppressed for so long yeah. because I thought it was wrong. Um, you mean, uh, did you think it was wrong as a man? At, at, well, I don't know if it was so much as a man. It was just based off religious kind of perspective and directionally with being so heavily programmatic with like, you got to follow this, do this. It's all about yeah. following this right. versus how you feel. Yeah, I'm sure got there's it. some, there's, the there's some man stuff. I'm sure. Old story man stuff. Yeah. Like men are supposed yeah. to be tough too. Like don't cry. Don't feel this or whatever that. But, um, one of the things that I've really noticed and become aware of late is like when I feel things that are light, mm -hmm. like when I, so when I step out of the old story and into like an undeniable space that we're talking about, like where it's just what it is. Yeah. It's so much, I, I, I call it freedom, but it's, it's light. It's like, there's no, there's no all this weight. Right. That you, and, and it's like somebody took a, you know, a barbell off your back, you know, almost. And when you get in that space, so I was, that's what I was asking. Do you, do you notice that too? Of when I move out of this stuff, it's like, whew, man, that was, I didn't realize how heavy that was. Right. Until now that I've stepped aside See, what's, from it. What's really interesting is that 
it's when focusing on the feeling, it enables you to release it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and not be weighed down by what you think you feel in regards to it. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, it, we tie these responses to these things in which we're supposed to be this way or you're supposed to react this way or talk to your mom this way or do this in church or do this in school. And right. There's all these expectations, expectations yeah. unrealistic expectations that are tied to words or actions that create feelings. Mm-hmm. Um, or, yeah, I guess they program the old story of the feeling. And so uh-huh. it's the willingness to then see it for what it is that allows you to be free of it versus tied to it all the time you know let's use this very simple I'm going to go deep and really piss some people off here online real real quick oh this is good yes yes hold let me call up Joe Rogan I got the edge of my seat I got yeah I was going to say get in get in the shot go ahead I'm going to let you go around the campfire religion (laughs) oh lord one of my favorite topics Mm -hmm. it's because I've spent a lot of time in religion so I don't have anything bad against it I have a, a lot of Extra, or experience and time yep. in it. Uh, they want you to believe that you are essentially bad at your core. Which is why you need these external things to make you good. And so it goes back to something that Eric was talking about earlier about you know, looking at all these things around you like you made the mistake or there's this evil force against you, the devil, the yeah, what you yeah. caused that right. yeah, or... type of thing. And the reality is is that that is not what is. That is the old story. Mm-hmm. And that old story causes you to then look out and find out what you did wrong or maybe the devil's out to get you or these different things. Because, it, you know, you cannot produce anything that is good because your nature is it bad. It's horrible. Right. Yeah, it's and damn. here's the truth. That's a lie. Yep. Folks, that's a lie. I'm sorry. If you're a pastor, if you want to prove me wrong, uh, let's go. Listen, we'll bring you to the Office of Infinite Possibilities and talk about it for hours. Yep. I'm, I'm all welcome. for it. We welcome. What we believe, what all we know to be true based on our experience, strength, and purpose is that we were created in the image of an intelligent designer that created all things. And because of that, we have the be- the ability to be all things in every single moment because of the image in which we were created in. And when you just stop for a minute and you stop looking at your old story and how bad you think your life is or what's going on over here, politics or hurricanes or divorces or whatever it is, relationships that you have in your life, and you just shut up, just shut up for a minute and you say, close your eyes and you listen to your breath and you hear yourself and you remember who you are which is an individual an incredible creation made in the image of the creator of all things I promise you that every molecule in your body will ignite and change within seconds which is what goes back to the whole idea of Change is hard. Change takes all this time. Because right. if you would just shut up, what that means is shut your mouth up and shut the old story up, the brain up. Breathe. Listen to your heartbeat, which is the frequency of life. And I guarantee you that everything in your body will change at that moment in time. Mm-hmm. And if you don't believe, so try it. I have yet to meet somebody that honestly authentically did it and said otherwise and so that's one simple area in life that we can look at and say it's not that we're trying to prove anything wrong or right it's no longer about that anymore it's simply just about seeing things for what they are and then rising up within that and changing ourselves right changing our communication to ourselves changing our communications to the ones around us so that we can be who we were created to be, individually, corporately, um, 
nationally, globally, whatever it is. And that power is just incredible once you tap into it. Mm -hmm. But if you want to sit there and just deny it, then you're just participating Sorry. in that old story. And the denial is, hey, that you can't look at that. You can't do that because we said you couldn't do it. Yeah. And here all the undeniable is sitting right in front of you where there's so many others that are tapping into this and seeing these things for what they are and participating in this uh, universal change, if you will. I can't mm. even believe I'm saying that live on Facebook, but mm. uh, it is just there and yeah. there it is free. You're, when you allow yourself to get there, it's a freedom. Yeah. Where before it's you're trying to control what you think you know based on what you've been told, not yeah. what you've experienced. You're, it goes. To, it it creates that compartmentalization mindset. Mm -hmm. Like I've got to do this. I got to put this here. This is. And you've got to organize right. all that. If I organize everything just right, then I will experience freedom, mm -hmm. or then I'll be okay, or then I'll be good, or then I'll be saved, or then I'll be whatever it is. And instead of just stepping back and coming to the understanding or awareness that you already possess or are right. everything you could possibly ever need to mm. be. Right. There's okay. nothing missing, you know? And the only so, thing that, the only thing that's got in the way of that is your conscious presence on this earth from childbirth to, mm -hmm. to your current moment in time. Right. And those, that is what has dictated that resistance to actually being what you were created to be. And one thing I wanted to mention too is kind of along those lines is the positive, not the power of positive thinking, but the positivity, the optimism versus pe pessimism. The same thing of um, instead of thinking about what you want, you end up thinking about what you're lacking and coming from a place of lack. I think that's really good to tie into all of these things because it's been a part of our adventure to get us where we are now is living in the, um, the thing, you know, living in that space of what we want, not what we lack. Does that make sense? Can you expand on that? Or, can or if you're talking about positioning yourself in lack and being in a position of... Um, I'm actually more talking about, I mean, there's so much there, but yeah. how so much of our lives, or just speaking in uh, personally, it's very easy to point out all the bad and not focus on the good. Right. It's very easy to not be appreciative of where you're at, even if where you're at is not where you want to be. Right. Well, I think that goes back to the awareness aspect, right? Is if I'm um, not in the moment, I cannot be aware of what I truly have, right? Right. And so then I've positioned myself to be somewhere else that, and so all that really exists ever is the eternal now. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not in the moment, I am in a place that does not exist, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is why it is so, it's a crazy place, right? I'm, what would you call somebody that lives in a place that doesn't exist? Crazy. They live in a fantasy world, mm -hmm. right? So now I'm living in a fantasy world and responding and setting expectations of how life should go based on a fairy tale right. or a fantasy. And I'm wondering why I feel the way I do. Well, it's because I've, my place of origin in that moment is a place of lack. Yeah. I'm not who I am and I'm not where, I'm where, I'm not where I should be or, or I am. I am somewhere else. So I'm, I've split myself, which causes pain. It would be like, I don't know who I am right. because I don't know where I am because I don't know where I came from. And Yeah. And so the simplicity of of getting back into that space of awareness of where, uh, here's where I am goes back to the undeniable of when you're out there, what's undeniable? Where am I right now? Right. right? Like some of the simple exercises we do is, <laughs> who are you? Right? It's so funny right. when we first started doing the packet that Chase put together, it'd be like, well, I'm... You know, I'm 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 an addict, or I'm this, or I'm uh, you know I'm a, a son of a son of a sailor, or whatever they came up with, and it was like, no, dude, your, your name's Bob. Like yeah. that's it. Yeah. <laughs> what is your name? What is your name? And then it was like, where are you? And they're like, well, right now in life, I'm in this place. Like, no. <laughs> you know, you're at the table, yeah. right in the Adonai house. 
Yeah. That's it. And it's like, but the it, what you start realizing very quickly Tuesday. is how hard, like how we've made such simple things right. so complex. Right. It's like, and you realize how much time that you actually spend not present. Right. That, that's what you first become, start becoming aware of when you look at it and accept it. It's like, holy crap. I like, life is so much more simple than I've made it out to be. And even in asking these simple questions, I overcomplicate them. One, because I'm trying to give the right answer. Right. And two, because I'm totally unaware that the reality is, is like, I can only be right here, right now, as Eric in this moment. I right. can't be anybody else. I can talk about all the stuff I used to do in the past and who I used to be, but that's not who I am in this moment. That's who I used to be mm-hmm. or pretend to used to be or whatever. Or back talk at those about time. all the things I want to be. Yeah, the wannabe. All the things I'm doing or, yeah. <laughs> you know, have done or going to yep. do or these types of things Need instead of just being in the, the moment. moment. And then, so what happens is, is you're not there and you start looking around and you're comparing. Of, right. So I'm in a place of should be, want to be, like we said, there's, there's all these, I'm not who I am, I'm all these other things. So then I've started comparing what I don't have, what I need, and now I'm in lack. Which, which I mean, is I'm in judgment, pain. which yeah. is lack, and yeah. then so self awareness is simply that ability to realign with who you are, and it allows you to identify the undeniables, which is a lot what allows you to progress beyond what yourself. Yeah, and it's simple questions like yeah. that's the thing that we've you know talked about and 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 done for a long time, which is. Simple questions to reposition yourself right. back to now. Uh, and I heard some great ones the other day were just real simple, too, to add to it. I think I shot some over to you. It's like, you know, what do you prefer? You know, and, and it's a yeah. real simple stuff like fear or ease, you know, pain or pleasure. And like you start realizing, like, okay, this is who I'm getting back into who I am. Like, real simple, get back out of the in some general space and some freer space. Instead of hanging out in this real specific crap, it's all compared. It's all story, old story stuff that I've compared to something else that I think I know. Right. And it's drifted me off versus, who am I? I'm Eric. Where Where am I right now? All right. What's going on right now? Yeah. Right? Like, those are pretty simplistic things am to I ask yourself. Am I paddling upstream? Am I paddling? Yeah. Does or this, am I just enjoying the ride yeah. of life and how do I, how does it straight. feel right now do i feel heavy or do i feel light do i feel right. like i'm swimming upstream or do i feel yeah. like i'm coasting and floating downstream and just by answering those things it'll tell you exactly how you're positioned mm-hmm. what i like is that you figure out you might not know in the moment like what you like but if you know what you don't like mm-hmm. that leads you to what or what you don't want that leads you right to what you well, want some of the things that we do in that packet with guys too is is, is you explore who you're not you know, and I, I, I might not know exactly who I am, but I can also identify who I'm not, which then tells me who I am. So because I hang a lot, I hang out quite often in who I'm not. Yeah. So if I can identify that, then I look back and say, is this who I am right now? Yep. Well, that's not who I am. I don't, I'm and also not, not using labels to define that. I mean, I know that's one big thing I was pre-programmed in mm-hmm. is the label maker. Yeah, which is feelings. Yeah. You know. Which is old story, and unfortunately or fortunately, we live in a life where we got to use words um, to the best of their ability to help us identify who we are, where we are, and where we came from. And so, as we've gone through this transition over the last couple of years of words, because mm-hmm. when you change yeah. your life, your words change. Um, it has been really interesting to see how much power we give words, words. Mm-hmm. and you know we went, I, I know for me personally going from uh, using a particular word and then mm-hmm. you know never wanting like couldn't even stand to hear the word then to using the word to define who I am in different situations mm-hmm. and it's just a very interesting adventure and uh, you know at the end of the day it's simply about willingness to be in the adventure so that you can change and if you're not willing you can't change and examining those undeniables 
we, that's yeah you got to be willing you know I told Jake and I were talking earlier and um, I you know I said you know bef before you can be a leader you have to be a follower it's part of it, it you know it's part of that process so then when you're the leader you can no longer be the follower in that moment in time because mm -hmm. you're now the leader you cannot go backwards and so we live in a world where there's a lot of leaders but there's few leaders there's a lot of supposed to be leaders mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but they're all following yeah yeah That's they're, good. they're just repeating right and yeah. really they were created to be leaders and they're they're following and um you you can't be a follower when you're created to be a leader. Well, I think once you start becoming self-aware of how that process works, it enables you and empowers you in your life to identify what a true leader is for you to follow. Mm -hmm. Because you can be you you're then aware of someone who's just repeating old story garbage, correct? Versus someone who's genuinely leading and creating something new and different, right? Mm -hmm. And so it there then comes what 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 some people would call wisdom and being able to make decisions on who to emulate or follow or go with and who not to. And uh, you see a lot of that in a lot of these different camps of, quote, leaders who really are just repeating some old something that they heard from somebody else that probably worked for somebody at some point in time or did something for somebody at some point in time, and that's why they kept doing it. But, um, you know, the definition of a... Uh, dysfunctional behavior is, is that it, it's a behavior that at some point in time worked for somebody and so they kept repeating it even after it didn't work anymore right yeah. and, <laughs> definition of insanity yeah. right but and, yet uh, that's still what a lot of people are doing right. in the immortal words of gary b um leaders do not speak leaders do yeah and um that's one thing that you can be rest assured around here is that yeah we like to do podcasts and make posts and do all those things but there is nothing that we talk about or post about that we don't practice personally ourselves extensively and um that is the case and will always be the case around here yeah, yeah. So. well i think that's a really good place to end and um, this was a fun experiment where the three of us did the Facebook Live video. Um, Do we have any comments? Video podcast. We questions? Have Hayes, and we have a hey. lot of people Anybody talking, but no questions. Any, uh, any? I, I don't see any questions. You might have questions from people there, that Is there anybody yours. outside with pitchforks and flaming uh, Possibly. stakes? Could, could be. I'm not sure. but um, I wasn't doing a Facebook Live, by the way. I just shared yours. Right. Right. No, I knew that. Okay. So anyway, if you do have any questions or if there's a topic that you'd like to know how we feel about it or want to cover, just hit us up on anywhere you can find us. Facebook, Facebook. or yeah. Twitter. Instagram. Or the tweets or the Instagrams. Or the personal pages or the or the pages. Anchors. Or the anchor, anchor or the radio. We're basically or Podbean. everywhere you want to be. Everywhere you want to be. <laughs> and it's where we are. That's where we are in the moment. All right. Thank you for joining us. Um, we will be here again next week. Same time. More video cameras. And as Jason says, until then, live authentically.